Now there's one last thing that's really important about the box model and that it's that the default way that boxes are sized is wrong. Um, maybe that's a bit of a strong statement, but it, it's a bit of a universally agreed one actually. And to highlight that, I'm gonna come on my paragraphs where we have uh, some sizing on here uh, with some padding and I'm actually gonna make the uh, padding a little bit bigger. And let's refresh that. So we have a decent amount of padding coming all the way around on that. Uh, let's make the border a little bit bigger too and refresh that just so we can see that we have the padding then we're adding the border even though that color comes underneath it with the dots uh, and so we have the content box plus the padding plus the border happening right there and so if i come on my paragraphs here and i'm going to say they have an inline size of let's say 400 pixels and hit refresh there so we can see it. And so we've set their width to four, uh, 400 pixels. So if you're using the non-logical version, that would be width right there. And we have 400 pixels there. Let's come and change this padding now to 100 pixels and hit refresh. Notice how it's gotten bigger. And now let's come here on, on this now and make the padding 200 instead. They get bigger again. And this sort of makes sense. We set the size of the element, we're adding our padding, and then we're adding our borders on top of that. The problem is it makes it really hard to work with elements because a lot of the time when you set a size and like visually the padding looks like it should be part of that size, but we're not setting the size on the element itself. We're setting the size on the content box, which is this little area in here. And then we're adding these other things on top of it, which it just, it's, it makes sense, which is I think why that became the default. Uh, and that's the way the behavior works, but in practice, it's really inconvenient because when we think of the size of the element, we're thinking of it to include all of the visual parts of it, which includes our very pretty borders and background colors and things that we're putting on there. So I'm gonna uh, decrease this ridiculous padding down to 50 for now, uh, just to show what we can do to fix this and the common way we fix this. And this is part of what most people call their CSS reset, where one of the very first things they do, and I do this on my projects too, is you put a star at the very top. And that's a star selector. And if you put a star like that, it's actually selecting every single element on your page. And so what we could say on this, we've selected every single element and there's a property called box sizing. And we wanna change it to border box. And I'm gonna hit save and I'm gonna refresh. And you can see that actually got smaller. And now if I come and take a look down here and we can actually fix this color that I had a typo on from earlier as well. Uh, if I come back down to my paragraphs here and now let's, we have our par that's set up. And now if I add some padding here, let's make it smaller. If I do that as 20 and now let's bring this up to 100 just to show you that when I refresh that it's staying at exactly the same size and the padding is moving inwards, which means the content has less room. So the elements have to grow in their block size or in their height. So, this, when you're actually working on elements where you're adding padding to them, becomes a much more intuitive way to work just because visually speaking, we want the size to include everything we see on the element. So this is one of the most common things at the top of every CSS file that you'll ever see is this star box sizing border box like this. And we have to do it on the star selector, which is selecting everything because we, and and not put it on the body like we've done for our font properties here because box sizing is not an inherited property. And it would be kind of convenient if it was in a way, but it's not. And so we have to select every element and put it on there. In general, you want to avoid doing this. You do not want to put stuff on your star selector. If you can, you want to rely on inheritance instead. It's a much better way to work. But inheritance is something that applies to your font properties, your colors, your font sizes, your font families, all of those things. It's not something that generally applies to margins and spacing and layout type things. Because imagine if you were to put a margin on your body and that inherited and every element got more margin on it, or you added a border on something and then all of the children in there also got a border on it. That would be really awkward. So layout things and box model things and all of these other things aren't inherited. It tends to only be uh, these ones right here. So just really quickly to say that I would suggest putting a box sizing of border box at the top of your CSS file and just remembering to put that on every time because uh, it will make your life a lot easier in the long run. And with that done, I am gonna come all the way back down here and just remove this silly example that I've been using for the last few lessons where we've been exploring the box model.